We have recently been going over the four key steps of getting good imaging. Today, we will be doing step three. Welcome to Sonar Tech Skills. Join your host, Greg Lipinski, as he travels the world training police, fire, and military professionals in side scan sonar. With nearly two decades of experience in the location, documentation, and recovery of underwater criminal evidence, he is now sharing that knowledge with you. Learn right alongside first responders so you too can master the world of sonar. Okay, step three is range. Step three is range. So what is range? Let's talk about range and why it's step number three. We'll start off with 100 feet of range. So it's 100 feet from here to here, right? Range again being one side, okay? We have a second range here, 100 feet from here to here. So our swath is what? 200, 200 feet, 200 feet. What are you watching this waterfall on? That laptop, right? That laptop's what, 15 inches, 17 inches? So if you're spanning 200 feet across a 15 inch laptop, we can break this down into tenths, right? So that's about 10 feet. You can fit 10 of those in there. That fits right nice over this. That's about, I don't know, a third of that 10 feet. So that's how big. How big would we say this is? About four feet, about four feet. So even on a screen this big, that four foot object is pretty damn small at 100 feet of range. So you need to decrease your range to make objects bigger on the screen so your eye can understand what it is you're looking at, right? It's not that the side scan didn't see it, it's that your eye wasn't able to determine what the object was. So you need to figure out, okay, well, how do I adjust my range? I use what's called the rule of thumb. Anybody know what the rule of thumb is? Talking about my rule of thumb, which means at this length, I am not blind enough that I can still see my thumb, right? I'm pretty blind. I wear glasses and I have to wear readers now and all that crap. Um, so, but at this distance, I can still see my thumb. I can see my thumbnail. I can see the wrinkles on the back of my thumb. I can see the hair. I can see all of the details about my thumb at this distance, okay? So if I'm at this distance, which is the same distance I stand from my computer, if the object on my screen is the size of my thumb, then I should be able to see it when it comes down. Make sense? Pretty easy, right? So what I do is I adjust my range and use my length tool to measure my thumb. So I draw a little measurement on the screen and I put my thumb on it and I draw it so my thumb equals six feet. The width of my thumb equals six feet. That means if an object comes down, I can quickly put my thumb up and say, okay, it's six feet or around six feet, right? But I know that I should be able to see a six foot body if I've ranged where my thumb, my physical thumb, equals the digital six feet on the screen. Does that make sense? All right, everybody track it. Okay, so if I'm looking now for a semi-truck, I still use the rule of thumb. I get the length of the semi-truck, which is what, 40 feet, 45 feet, something like that, and I can range out, giving myself better range until the semi-truck is about the thickness of my thumb. So the bigger the object, the bigger the range I can have and still be able to see the object on the screen. Now what happens when I'm looking for a handgun? Gotta bring that range far in until the handgun again is what? Same size as my thumb. So it doesn't matter what object you are looking for. It doesn't matter the size of the object that you're looking for. It matters that you adjust the range so the object will appear bigger or smaller on the screen. Does that make sense? Okay, question. Yes. Even, so whether you adjust the range or not, if your frequency only goes to a certain limit, then you're not gonna then you're stuck. see it yep. regardless of So let's take 1800 kilohertz, for example, on a digital side scan sonar, we'll only see 40 feet. You can't go 80 feet, right? You can't go 90 feet. You can go 40 feet, you can go 10 feet and you can go anywhere in between, but you can't go over that. So if you are, you are limited by the extent of the power of the range. Make sense? Okay. So that was actually uh, this one. Um, 
Next is uh, the size of the target. And then how much detail do you need of the target? That's another limitation. How much detail do you need? Well, why do we need to know how much detail, right? What does it matter? Shouldn't we just get as much detail as we can anyway? The amount of detail that's needed normally depends on is it a criminal event or is it an accidental event? Did grandma fall off the fishing boat or did grandpa push grandma off the fishing boat? Right? It's two different circumstances. When accidental, you know, grandma falls off, fire department comes out, they recover grandma and they send her on her way. Right? If grandpa pushed grandma off the fishing boat, we need to do what? as police officers. Documentation, we're gonna document it. So that's how we select a range. Is there any questions on range? Any questions on range? We're going to set the range based on the size and the amount of detail you need out of your object. Okay, so what was step one? Step two? Frequency. Frequency. Step three? Range. range. That leads us to step four. Step four is the most crucial when it comes to why you're getting really crappy imaging. I get people call me up all the time, my imaging really sucks and I don't understand why. But I know what target I'm looking for, I've, I've selected the right frequency to see all the detail, I've set the range so it would appear nicely on my screen and, then I, and they completely just skip over depth. 